Um, good day, everyone, and welcome to the second lecture of our midterms. Uh, for this week's topic, our topic would be parvovirus, papovavirus, and adenovirus. From last week's um, lecture, it's a purely RNA. For this week's topic, it's all about DNA viruses. Okay, now, our topic would be the papova, the adenovirus, and the parvovirus. Okay, but let me just show you now how. Um, how are what are the general characteristics of one from the other? Okay, let's first discuss the parvovirus. Your, parvo, your parvovirus is a DNA virus. From this table alone, you may actually um, it's very helpful to memorize all the general characteristics of this DNA viruses. But from this red box, ito lang po ang kailangan natin memorize. Okay. Let's first discuss the parvovirus. It is a DNA virus, single-stranded, naked, icosahedral, linear virus. Okay? Ito lang po at nag-iisa lang siya na single-stranded. The rest of the DNA viruses are either enveloped or either naked, but they are double-stranded. Okay? Now, let, now let's go to your pa, pa, pova. Papova virus or your adeno, adenovirus. What do they differ? They are both DNA virus. They are both double-stranded. They are both naked. And they are both icosahedral. The only thing that differs one from the other is that the papovirus, which are your human papilloma virus, your polyoma, your JC virus, and your BK virus are all circular. Okay. What about your adenovirus? It is now linear type. No? It's the same. DNA, double-stranded, naked, icosahedral, but the adenovirus is linear. Okay? All right. So let's start with the parvovirus. Uh, parvovirus was discovered by Yvonne Cossart in 1970s, which comes from the word parvum, a Latin word meaning small. Okay? This is the smallest animal virus. As mentioned, it is single-stranded, DNA, naked, icosahedral, linear um, DNA virus. All right, so this is the viral replication of the parvovirus. No? The first step would be the variant attaches to its, to its host cell. Your host cell would be um, coming the, with the usual characteristics, the virion penetrates its cell and its DNA is uncoated. Once it's uncoated, its mRNA would undergo early transcription and translation. Thus, enzymes are synthesized. Okay. After this step, late transcription, meaning DNA is now ready for replication. And once uh, replication is um, taken place, uh, capsid proteins are synthesized, meaning uh, from the late transcription to late translation, what happens is that capsid proteins are synthesized. Once there are capsid proteins, the virions now will be mature and then it will be released in the circulation for uh, multiplication, for viral multiplication and infection. Okay, The parvovirus um, is the causative agent of the fifth disease or we call this your erythema infectiosum. Okay? Um, the characteristic of parvovirus or fifth disease would be slap cheeks, and the uh, cells affected would be the endothelial cells. What happens in the fifth disease or erythema infectiosum is that there are um, conditions such as a plastic crisis. When there is a, a, a plastic crisis, take note, okay, take note that the a blood picture of a plastic crisis would still be normocytic normochromic. But what about RBC? The RBC precursor, before it becomes an immature RBC or red blood cell, this um, if if disease or erythema infectiosum, it's a sickle cell, it will develop as a sickle cell anemia or it could be of hemolytic type of anemia. It does not um, reach its 120 days maturation of RBC. Diba? The lifespan of red blood cell in our blood circulation would be uh, 120 days. We all know that as a, laboratory, as a laboratory scientist. But in a plastic crisis brought about by this fifth disease, it undergoes sickling 
or it does not reach 120 days, it starts to hemolyze. All right. Now, what about this? What are the comp one of the complications of VFTC? Is it could be fatal. It could develop hydrops fetalis or hemolytic disease of the newborns. Sometimes um, the pregnancy will take place, but during the first trimester, uh, it can create miscarriages or nakunan in Tagalog. All right. 50% uh, of childbearing age are susceptible if you have this one. The, but the mode of transmission, how, how it is transmitted. Uh, the mode of transmission is or are the following. Respiratory route, no inhalation of um, uh, in inhalation via droplets, blood products, um, transfusion, factor eight and factor nine concentrates, and transplacental, meaning vertical transmission from mother to baby. Okay, all right. This is the parvovirus pathogenesis. Look at this one. If the virus enters in the respiratory tract, it could be number one undergoes local replication. What does that mean? There is presence of a virus in the blood brought about, this par brought about by this parvovirus. What would happen if there is a virus in the blood, it could be, number one, replicate in the upper respiratory tract as manifested. You have your cough, difficulty of breathing, uh, cough codes, fever. Uh, it could be um, those uh, respiratory signs and symptoms. But another would be this is different or this is unique because once the virus enters into our circulation, it could develop into what we call rash or arthralgia. When we say arthralgia, these are muscle pains. When you say rash, this is manifested as skin manifestation, nasa balat. Now, this is the um, characteristic of your erythema infectiosum or 50 cs There is what we call a rash. And there is what we call muscle pains. Okay. Now, going back to this um, viral penetration in the upper respiratory tract, aside from going into the blood, number two would be the viral replication would be in the erythroid precursor cells in bone marrow. In hematology, when we say erythroid precursor, these are the precursors of our red blood cells. Okay. Before it goes or before it becomes the mature red blood cell. Okay. As a review, a mature RB, our uh, right blood cell would be enucleated. It contains hemoglobin and the lifespan is 120 days. Okay. But in parvovirus, as mentioned kanina, the parvovirus, its lifespan of RBC decreases, nagka-cut, not um, attaining its 120 days. Okay. Now, um, once the viral replication takes place in the erythroid precursor, it's a bone marrow. Number one, it goes to a normal host. What would happen is that the normal host would um, sense that there is a viral replication of this parvovirus, but there is only a slight drop in hemoglobin level, meaning there is a slight anemia. No blood transfusion, okay? No blood transfusion. No need for erythropoietin, no need for admission because you have a normal host. Okay? There is just a slight drop in hemoglobin. Hindi natin kailangan ng, ng blood transfusion for a normal host. But, okay, but if there is a viral replication that happens in bone marrow and it goes to the host with chronic hemolytic anemia, meaning meron ng hemolytic anemia, there are immunocompromise. No, they, they, this patient has chronic hemolytic anemia. Ibig sabihin, 120 days, nag-hemolize before 120 days. So RBC niya is hindi na siya ng 120 days. If you have that host or patient with chronic hemolytic anemia, it is life-threatening aplastic crisis. Meaning, it could um, affect its internal organs. You will have a chronic anemia. Chronic anemia, meaning uh, what are the manifestations? Easy fatigability, generalized body weakness. Now, um, please take note that in the parvovirus pathogenesis, it could happen into a normal host, but the life-threatening aplastic crisis of parvovirus would happen not just with chronic hemolytic anemia, but for those patients who are immunocompromised. 
Okay? Meaning, compromise yung immune system nila, mababa ang immune system nila, pwede silang dapuan ng viral infection, just like parvovirus. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, so in the anatomy of infection of the parvovirus, look at this one. This is very interesting. The entry point is also the exit point. Para makahawa ka, para ma sorry, para mahawa ka, you need to inhale the respiratory droplets. But for you to become infectious, you need to exhale the parvovirus. Okay? Now, once replication is done here in the rep upper respiratory tract, the manifestation is number one in the cheeks. That there is the slap cheek na tinatawag. I'll show you pictures later. Slap cheeks, both yan, usually. And sometimes, not just the rash, as mentioned kanina, meron din dapat arthralgia. Meaning art na arthralgia, there is muscle pains. The rash and parietus could manifest into this um, uh, shoulder joints. The rashes and parietus could be in the skin. And arthralgia, obviously, sa mga joints. Okay? Another anatomy of infection, the fetus, as mentioned, one of the mode of transmission would be fetomaternal or vertical transmission from mother to baby. That's why, uh, pala siya sa uterus ni mommy, nagkakaroon na ng miscarriages. O what do you mean by miscarriages? Na kukuna na siya. Nagkakaroon na ng incomplete abortion because it attacks your fetal or your fetal membrane. Okay. Um, this one is actually your bone marrow. This is in the femur. The femur, uh, once we did a um, bone marrow aspiration biopsy, we can see that there is really a plastic crisis, meaning um, kulang yung, yung RBC maturation. Marami nga lang perpetuos or not marami, hindi nagiging 120 days. Madali silang mag -hemolize. They would undergo a plastic crisis, especially for those immunocompromised patients. Okay? All right, so let's move on. In this illustration, you would see that from the start of infection, okay, from the start of infection uh, of the erythema infectiosum, sometimes the aplastic crisis would coincide with the symptoms such as your malaise, okay, usually on the eighth day. From the time, na, from the zero to six days, usually you don't have any signs and symptoms pa. No, there is incubation period as mentioned, but during this part of the second to fourth day, uh, meron, ang in, meron ang pa start. But the start of increase in virus in the blood would start from the sixth day. Once it reached its peak, there is your symptoms. Not just symptoms, but also the plastic crisis. Your hemoglobin would drop. Okay? You would experience malaise or body malaise, body weakness. And then once the viremia slides uh, starts to drop down from this air from this time the 10 to 12 day your specific IgM as mentioned after antigen um uh, an initiation or, or presentation antibodies would now increase and plateau after IgM you have an acute infection look at this one after IgM or immediately after the viral um, by viremia is at its lowest point, the start of your specific IgG would rise on the 16th day. Pa. All right? What does that mean? If Once you have this antibody, sometimes the Russian arthralgia would appear. All right? So once there's Russian arthralgia, oops, um, sabi ni Doc, kapag may Russian arthralgia, that's erythema infectiosum. Most likely, Matagal na na-expose. Okay? Matagal na na-expose yung patient from the 0 to 14th day. Konti lang yung symptoms sa just the malaise. But the rash and arthralgia would manifest once there is now an increase in your IgG or your antibody IgG. Okay? Please take note of this table. Alright. This is the typical rash of your um, erythema infectiosum, you have the rash on your face. This is what you call the slappy chick. And you have your lace-like rash on the extremities. Uh, sometimes when, when you ask your patient to move uh, uh, his or her arms, no, sometimes they would um, 
uh, iiyak, no? Irritable na yung mga bata or masakit yung joints kasi nga there is an arthralgia or um, joint pains. This is also another picture of your slappy cheek. Now, your clue here is not just the slap cheek but also the rashes in the extremities and also arthralgia. Okay, please take note of that. Yeah, this is all example. Um, a picture showing your slap cheeks. And the rash on the extremities would look like this as blotchy or raised rash. Okay, so aside from rashes, slappy cheek in appearance and arthralgia, these are all clinical manifestation of your parvovirus. All right, this one is a, an interesting picture. This one is a patient with blotched rashes with slap cheek. Oops, this is 56, sa mini doc. And look at this um, uh, blood picture. There is some form of hemolysis or hemolytic type of anemia. Thus, um, this picture on the right is very unfortunate. It, it undergoes or it underwent hemolytic disease of the newborn. Uh, once in the uterus, pa, there is some um, immune complexes that affects the normal uh, pregnancy of uh, one's of a mother. Na nagkakaroon na ng hemolytic type of anemia. But this one is hemolytic disease of the newborn. It could happen because the parvovirus transmission is also from inhalation. Tapos kapag na infect si mommy, maka affect din sa baby. No? So this is a hemolytic disease of the newborn. Alright, how do we diagnose parvovirus? Aside from clinical manifestation, as a medical laboratory scientist, we need to be focusing on this. It could uh, be from a serological test and DNA test diagnosed this by the presence of IgM. If you have parvovirus IgM, it's an acute, right? No, so you you simply um, focus on no, not. But giving antibiotics, but also diagnosing no, uh, this parvovirus or fifth disease. We can also diagnose parvovirus through the polymerase chain reaction or viral DNA from blood sample or in cases of fetus from amniotic fluid. Doc, what do you mean fetus from amniotic fluid? Um, amniotic fluid is the fluid that is um, uh, found inside the uterus of of a pregnant woman. Okay? Diyan ang fluid. Paano natin malaman if there is a manifestation or if you suspect that there is a parvovirus infection from the mother, you may actually obtain amniotic fluid sampling or a sample uh, from the mother and then we test it no, using this PCR or we have to get viral DNA. Do? DNA? Yes, kasi ba DNA ito? Uh, DNA virus is a parvovirus um, na as mentioned kanina sa table. So we need to do a blood sample from uh, one patient and if there is in cases of fetus, okay, from the amniotic fluid, if we suspect a fifth disease or parvovirus infection. Okay. All right, we'll not be dwelling much on the treatment and um, management of parvovirus, but at this point, this is the parvovirus fifth disease manifested by fee, uh, well, it could be fever, kasi nga, it's a viral infection, but most common clinical manifestation of your erythema infectious or fifth disease would be rash, uh, pruritic rashes, slap cheek, and arthralgia. We diagnose it by clinically based on, on the signs and symptoms, but as a med tech, you, you, we need to do this um, diagnostic, te diagnostic test, such as uh, serologic test, DNA test, um, PCR, or viral DNA. We may also obtain sample from the blood to see the antibodies and to see if there is an actual parvovirus infection using this amniotic fluid uh, of a pregnant woman. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the next. Now, the next one would be the Papo Papova. Virus, it means here, pa, papilloma viruses, po would be polyoma virus of the mice, oh, but my mice, and VA would be the vacuolating or the semen virus 40 or SP40. Okay, let's talk about the features of Papova viruses. 
Papoma viruses, as indicated kanina doon sa table, is a double, uh, it's a DNA virus, circular and double-stranded. It is a naked, meaning it's there are non-enveloped, and there are icosahedral in symmetry. Um, transcriptional enhancers are first defined for the Papova viruses, and usually it uses the host cell DNA polymerase to replicate the genome. DNA polymerase is very specific to a certain virus, but in this type of Papova virus, um, they use this DNA polymerase. There are so many enzymes that are used for replication, replicating genome, right? But for this specific Papova viruses, please remember this enzyme, DNA polymerase. Okay, now let's talk about this table. So let's first discuss the pap. The, sorry, this one is the table I've shown kanina. They are all DNA, double-stranded, naked, icosahedral. But first, let's talk about Papova. So this is circular, double-stranded DNA virus. Okay? Papova. So let's first discuss the PA, which is the papilloma virus. This, as mentioned, this is a double-stranded DNA, icosahedral naked virus which contains 72 capsomers and two capsid proteins. This is your one major L1 gene and one minor L2 gene. This papilloma virus undergoes um, tropism, no? specifically at what type of cell? For squamous epithelial cell. So when you say squamous epithelial cells, usually we find this one in our skin. Thus, the papilloma virus, specifically the papilloma virus, um, its manifestation are warts in the skin. Okay, when we say warts, this can be found in our fingers, in the sole of the feet, and sometimes in our faces. No, yung mamalilit na yan. and we call this one depende kung saan sila. Right? The common warts are uh, also known as the veruca vulgaris. Okay. The plantar warts, veruca plantaris, and the flat warts are called your veruca plana. Plana meaning flat, veruca meaning warts. So when we say, when we diagnose patient with papatanggal ako ng warts, no, I'll go to derma, papatanggal ako ng warts, usually depending ko anong tawag, but they're all the same. They're all caused by papilloma virus. Okay? Okay, this is an example of wart. Ayan, yung common sa finger. Ayan, yung kail I minsan. I've, I've, I've heard so many testimonials from my patient. This type of warts, these are veruca vulgaris that are found in the fingers. Um, Nininil cutter nila daw to. Okay? Ayan, uh, ininil cutter nila yan, dutugo, pero mind you, okay, hindi to nawawala by just uh, doing... Uh, nail cutter of this lesion. Kailangan makoterize siya. Not um, nail cutter. It will just bleed. But um, doing the electrocautery of this wart would actually benefit sa patient natin kapag in uh, electrocautery, not nail cutter. Okay? So this is just an example of their common, flat, and plantar warts. This is an example of a common a common wart. Yes, sa mga fingers, sa medyo elevated. The flat warts would be this one. Pwede rin sa, sa mga fingers, sa mga toes. Pero pag flat, it's called veruca plana. Okay? But if it is uh, this one, elevated, it's common wart, veruca vulgaris. This one, either a flat or a, a um, elevated lesion na makikita mo sa um, plantar area or plantaris, it's veruca plantaris. No? Plantar warts. Yeah. Okay. So the papilloma virus is very significant in the recent era, okay, in the new era of cancer-causing diseases. Um, the the papilloma virus, specifically the human papilloma virus, sixteen and eighteen would be specific for cervical cancer. Okay. So please take note. What type of cancer? There are so many types of cancer, but the cervical cancer it's most common. Type of cervical cancer is the squamous cell cancer of the cervix. Okay, uh, HPV 16 and 18. Uh, 
it could be that the cancer can also involve vulva. That's vulvar cancer, your penile cancer. May mga tumors sa vulva and sa penis. But take note of this. When, the, when this um, cancer-causing uh, ward or cancer-causing tumor goes to your genital or anus or any genital warts, the, the most common type of uh, human papilloma virus would be HPV 6 and 11. Okay, these are human papilloma virus 6 and 11. But the cervical cancer, um, its designation would be HPV 16 and 18. Okay, so please memorize this one. Okay, these are some just pictures showing you this one. This is a penal um, cancer. Not, we cannot totally say that this is a human papilloma virus. No, we just have to take out the tumor and then get the biopsy done. Okay. All right. So this is an example of a cervical cancer staging. Uh, look at this normal uh, cancer. and oh, Sorry, normal anatomy of the female reproductive system. You have the vagina, your cervix here, and your uterus here. But in the early stages of cervical cancer, this is the cancer tissue. Okay? Wala pang masyado manifestations and class. Usually, um, even pain, walang masyado. But um, if you will adv advise your tita, your mommy, or your um, female friends to have a cervical cancer screening, by this, um, kapag nakita ng mga ob niyan during pop smear, makita nila the um, early detection of cancer if there is a cancer. But for those patients na uh, normally nagpapacheck up, mas maganda magpacheck up kayo, mas clean kayo ng cervical cancer. Okay? What else? Now, look at this late stage first um, first stage of cervical cancer. Not just confined here anymore, but it starts to go up in the uterus. Okay? Look at this stage 2B. There is this cancer tissue already, and there is manifestation of bleeding. Now, aside from menstrual bleeding, sometimes this patient, cervical cancer patients, presents with recurrent UTI, recurrent difficulty in urination or painful urination, and then we'll just treat the UTI. But if that patient, well, patient symptoms accompanied with uh, bleeding, you think of a, cancer, a cervical cancer type. The cancer spreads outside the cervix and that is stage 2 already. No? Um, Doc, paano po yung mga cervical cancer na mga HPV vaccine? That's very um, helpful. No? Just like any other vaccine, vaccine in, your, in new era of vaccine development, it's good na. Because they've created already this type of vaccine for um, protection or for prevention of cancer. Especially for those uh, patients or people or person na may, mga, may, na may mga cancer sa family or family history ng cancer. Okay. okay, this is just a picture of how uh, pop smear is done. No? Exaggerated lang yung, yung mukha ng patient. Pero have your uh, tita, uh, sister, friends uh, do a cervical cancer screening. And I advise also a HPV vaccine. Ayan, it, this is just another picture of the cancer tissue in a speculum. Usually, when, you, when we do a spe, uh, speculum with patient in lithotomy position, ganito po siya. Okay? Exclude, excluding the, the face of the patient. But this is the cancer tissue as shown if you have cervical cancer. All right? Okay. So in this slide, please take note of the following HPV. Now, usually in this slide, um, the skin cat, the, not, the, the, not the skin cat. So usually the plantar and the common warts, we cannot really delineate if it is H HPV 1, 2, or 4. No? Um, all I want you to remember is that the genital warts, the anogenital warts, is usually 6 and 11. And the 16 and 18, the most common is the cervical cancer. HPV 16 and 18, cervical cancer. This one, 11 and 6 
is the anal genital warts. Okay? Look at this one. 1, 2, and 4. They're all plantar and common warts. Doc, paano natin tatanggalin yan? As mentioned kanina, uh, we can do it electrocotony. Electrocotony ng warts um, para hindi na siya bumalik ulit. No? As, as shown by the pictures kanina, marami na siya kasi hindi natin natitreat or nagmamanage correctly. Alright? So, don't Memorize all this HPV, yung mga most important one lang mentioned. Again, HPV 1, 2, and 4. HPV 6 and 11 for the anal genital warts. And HPV 16 and 18 for the cervical cancer. All right. How do we diagnose uh, cervical cancer? Number one is through serology. No? And number two will be PCR DNA by detecting its DNA, viral DNA, using your polymerase chain reaction. And your biopsy, meaning, uh, as mentioned kanina, nakadorsal litotomy yan, kunin mo yung tumor, kunin mo yung, yung tissue, and have, and have it biopsy. Uh, usually, in a routine pop smear, nakikita natin, kahit walang masyadong uh, tumor, we, uh, when we do uh, pop smear, nadadetect din yung cervical cancer. Okay? What do we do if, uh, if one is um, diagnosed with um, warts or the usual, usual depending on, no? it's either surgery, laser, cryosurgery, or we can do topical using podophylin and idoxuridine. But this is not common anymore. Applying or application of topical uh, ointments for the Warts, no, usually we do cautery or electrocautery. Ma mabilis na yung electrocautery kahit maliliit para hindi na siya mag-multiply uh, mag agad-agad. Kasi as mentioned, doon na siya, no, the tropism for squamous epithelial cells are very common in this type of uh, papilloma virus. All right, next would be the polyoma virus from the papova. We're done with pa, which, which is our uh, papilloma, your polyoma would be like this. Okay, your polyoma, what does that mean? It is also a double-stranded DNA, naked icosahedral virus. The murine polyoma virus was first isolated by Ludwig Gross in 1953. Thus, the term polyoma virus in mice. Okay, but the polyoma virus, but polyoma virus, because number, this is the, um, the main reason. It causes solid tumors at multiple sites. Okay? It causes solid tumors at, at multiple sites. Example, these two examples of human polyoma viruses, they were isolated in 1971. Actually, marami pa siyang types. But the human polyoma virus, yun lang yung papag-usapan natin. And there are two human polyoma viruses, and they are both isolated in 1971. Let's first talk about the first Human polyoma virus or human polyoma virus 1. This is your BK virus or BKV. They, they are first isolated by Gardner et al. from urine of a patient after a kidney transplant. Um, this specific virus would really cause a renal disease or kidney problem. They are very much common in immunosuppressed kidney transplant patients. Um, it, can, it can actually also affect mild respiratory disease in children, and they're also isolated from virus tumors. So we really can tell that this is, um, when, when there is a uh, kidney problem patient, we can determine that this is a BK virus. No? As mentioned, this is not that common in, in, in one patient na may kidney problem, but they are can, they, they can be, um, uh, they can be, uh, pwede, pwede sa mga uh, patient na kaka-kidney transplant lang. Consider, we can consider a BK virus or human polyoma virus for those patient na kaka-kidney transplant lang. Why? Because they are immunosuppressed or immunocompromised. All kidney or, or all transplant patients are immunocompromised already. Alright? So, hindi dapat masyado silang nagkakaroon ng infection of, of all kinds. Next will be the human polyoma virus type 2 or your JC virus or JCV. They're all isolated by Paget et al. from a brain tissue. 
Now, it causes your progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy or PML. The, this is a rare disease involving plaques of demyelination or simply there is inflammation in the CNS. Thus, encephalopathy yung tawag. Okay? The oligodendrocytes, this is a type of cell from these lesions are infected with JC virus. Now, um, if number one, if the BKV or the BK virus affects the kidney for those patients na may kidney transplant patient, for JC virus, it's actually the brain. Okay? It causes PML or your progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. All right, so this is the pathogenesis of the polyoma virus. Now look, I'll, I'll use this red marker. Okay, it could be no, a JC or a BK virus. Depends kung saan sila pupunta. Now, trace, let's trace the JC, BK or the polyoma virus in general. Once they are inoculated into the respiratory tract, meaning the, the manner of transmission is inhalation by aerosol, there is multiplication in the respiratory tract na. Okay, dyan pa lang sa respiratory tract, meron ng multiplication. Once there is multiplication in the respiratory tract, it, goes, it undergoes primary viremia. Viremia meaning virus in the blood. Now, if there is multiplication in the kidneys, okay, there would be transient secondary viremia. What do you mean by transient secondary viremia? For immunocompetent patients, what, do, what does that mean? Immunocompetent. The, these are those people or patients or, or person in, or in general na maganda immune system just like us. Okay? We are all immunocompetent. Thus, the latent indefinitely in the kidney. It will just reside in the kidney, but it does not affect the kidney itself for those immunocompetent patients. Okay? But if, if you have a transient, okay? transient um, secondary viremia, once you are immunodeficient, meaning you have immunocompromised patient, that your immune system is deficient or immune, your immune system is compromised, there will be reactivation. Okay? Look, what does that mean? So, pwede yung JC or BK virus nasa blood lang natin at pwede yung magmultiply sa kidneys. Pero, if you are immunodeficient, that's the term, okay? If you are immunodeficient, there will be a reactivation. And that will allow a specific virus to multiply. If there is reactivation, depending on anong virus. The BK virus multiplies in urinary tract and it can cause this one, viruria and possible hemorrhagic cystitis. Viruria is the presence of virus, but it cannot detect a certain type of virus in just simple urinalysis. No? It uses uh, uh, RT-PCR, but the, the sample will be urine. Okay? Again, if this is the BK virus. If JC virus would be affected or would affect JC virus would really only affect in the CNS or the central nervous system, producing its possible progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. The key word for this pathogenesis of the polyoma virus would be reactivation. Okay? Look, sino, kanino, kanino mag-reactivate ang virus na yan? Of course, sa mga immunodeficient lang. Okay? Kidney transplant patient, HIV patient, um, those with autoimmune disease patients. So it's, this is not common for immunocompetent patient. Okay? Common to, common na reactivation ng polyoma viruses sa mga immunodeficient patient. Okay? So that would be the polyoma. And the last, the last would be the SV40 virus. This is ubiquitous in humans, but take note, patient naka red at naka all caps. They are not, associ not been associated with any type of disease. Okay? They will just reside like the SV40 the, they will just reside in the brain where they have been associated with a rare encephalopathy in immunocompromised individual. Okay? So, there. So, we have the uh, pa -pa papova viruses or the pa, the papilloma, the po with the polyoma, and the va would be the vacuolating virus or your, um, the last type of virus, which is our SV40 virus. Okay? So, we're done with the uh, 
and uh, the last will be adenovirus. We're done with the pop, pop, Papova viruses and the parvovirus. Now let's go to the last topic for this afternoon, for this week, would be the adenoviruses. Okay? Your adenoviruses looks like this. This is the structure of the adenovirus. And as you can see from this DNA, it is a double-stranded, naked, icosahedral. But look at this one. The adenovirus uh, is a linear type. Okay? Linear type. So parehas silang linear ni parvovirus. Pero double-stranded po si adenovirus. Is, look, oh, they are both linear. They are both icosahedral. They are both naked. They are both DNA. Pero parvovirus is single-stranded. While adenovirus is double-stranded. Okay? So the general characteristic um, viral structure of parvovirus and adenovirus is really identical except for the double-stranded adeno and the single-stranded parvovirus. Okay, so please memorize this table. Okay, in uh, morphology of the uh, adenovirus is double-stranded DNA naked icosahedral. The name originates from Greek word adenas, which means gland. Okay, this is the site from which they were initially isolated. Uh, the naked capsid with icosahedral symmetry, as mentioned kanina, and the fibers protruding from the capsid would facilitate binding onto the host. That's, that's very unique for adenoviruses. All adenoviruses, human adenoviruses, they share a common group-specific antigen, and we call this cross-reactive protein hexon. Okay? H-E-X-O-N. This is the specific antigen. It's cross-reactive protein of all human adenoviruses. The type-specific antigens are important in serotyping. No? Kaya kailangan, this serotyping, we will just be obtaining um, blood sample because the type-specific would be coming from serotyping. Adenoviruses were first isolated in 1935 from a human adenoid tissues. Now, since then, at least 49 distinct antigenic types have been is isolated from humans and many other types from animals. So, napakadaming antigen types. But all human serotypes are included in a single genus within the family adenoviridae. Okay? Um, latent infection is in the tonsils or adenoids. When you say latent infection, hindi pa siya nag, uh, hindi siya nagkukos ng infection right now. No, once it is reinfected, that is that will become infected again. Pero nasa nasa lang ang mga virus na to, They are just in the tonsils and adenoids. The adenovirus virus infections are common. Our outbreaks are common in the military recruits or in the camps. Okay, um, just like your uh, papova and parvovirus, the pathogenesis of the adenoviruses, they are spread by direct contact, respiratory droplets, but take note there is, sorry, there is fecal oral. So from the three types of viruses that we've discussed this week, um, this adenoviruses have has this fecal oral route of transmission. Okay, paano nangyari yun? Adenoviruses infect and replicate in the epithelial cells of the pharynx, the conjunctiva, the urinary bladder, and the small intestine. They are not spread beyond the original lymph nodes. But please take note, kaya naka-all caps yan, mag spread lang ang adenovirus in the regional lymph nodes if there you are immunocompromised. Okay? Again, it states here, not spread beyond the lymph node except in the immunocompromised host. Meaning, if you are immunocompromised, it, the adenovirus can be, uh, can be localized or can be seen in your lymph nodes or colony. The virus has tendency to become latent in lymphoid tissue and it can be reactivated by immunosuppression. So at this point, no, with all these three types of viruses, once you are immunocompromised or um, suppressed the immune system, this types of viruses that we've talked about 
uh, for this week, um, they are really common for those immunosuppressed individual. Okay? So, medyo unfair. Diba? Sila na immune system na mababa, sila pa yung pinaka rest at rest or prone to uh, acquire this type of infection. Okay? So, this is just a tabular form. Uh, sorry, an illustration of the adenovirus uh, pathogenesis. Look at this one. The virus can affect number one, eyes, and it could affect uh, upper respiratory. Sorry, upper respiratory tract. Pero it all goes down to the upper respiratory. So that means um, pwede siyang sa eyes, pwede mo siyang ma-inhale, and number, look at this one, pwede mo siyang through the fecal oral route. Okay? Now, this is interesting. Once the virus resides in the upper respiratory tract, it goes in the lower respiratory tract or in the lungs, and it goes in the digestive system. Ah, okay. So that means, okay, that means kahit anong route pa ng, um, or manner of transmission ng adenovirus, it all goes down to the gastrointestinal low respiratory infecting what we so-called lymph nodes or colony. Okay? Pwede sa eyes, pwede sa upper respiratory shock, pwede sa digestive system. Pero the, once it enters into our lymph nodes, it will undergo viremia. Now, if you are listening, lymph nodes, sabi, kanino daw lang siya pupunta? No? If you are immunocompromised patient. Okay? So, this is really, uh, once you have adenovirus infection, you, you think of an immunocompromised patient. Okay, in here, um, once the virus goes to the lymph node, it will undergo viremia or virus in the blood. It will go to our skin, manifest that skin, or it goes to multiple organs. Once they are inside our body, it can undergo resolution or it could be latent. It will just reside somewhere, but they are not in an active phase. Okay? Sometimes it is resolved or when you say latency, they are not inactive, meaning they just reside somewhere, just like in the lymph nodes, but it will not cause disease or infection. Okay. Okay. Adenovirus. Okay. Virus nga is the number one cause of viral conjunctivitis. Okay. So may nalatutunan kayo. It would, it's not just sore eyes. Now, when you say conjunctivitis, it could be bacterial, viral, uh, allergic, parasitic, lahat na ng types of infection. But the number one cause of viral conjunctivitis is adenovirus. Eh, doc, Asa, sabi mo immunocompromised lang. Hindi naman lahat. Okay? When we say adenovirus, that's the number one cause. Hindi naman natin na, na, na lahat naman ng may conjunctivitis, it can be treated by uh, an eye doctor or family doctor. Hindi na natin masyadong pinapabiopsy kasi. No? Or pinapatest kung anong classing virus yan. But please take note that the number one cause of viral conjunctivitis is adenovirus for immunocompetence. Okay, look at this one, adenovirus types. Um, 3, 4, 7, and 21 can cause acute respiratory disease. Adenovirus type 8 and 19 can cause epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. 11 and 21 can cause hemorrhagic cystitis. And number 40 and 41 can cause infantile gastroenteritis. And please take note, sabi natin, there are 49 or more uh, types of adenovirus, but on this slide, please memorize this um, adenovirus type lang because this can cause the following diseases. Okay, this slide only. Okay, these are just pictures um, the, of the adenovirus infection. It can cause viral conjunctivitis. That's the number one cause. That is adenovirus. Now, in this table, no need to uh, memorize this one. Now, this one will just show you the uh, disease that caused adenovirus and what are its patient population. If you look closely, these are usually infants and young children. Pneumonia, pertussis-like, acute respiratory disease or acute respiratory infection. Other than respiratory disease, these are acute hemorrhagic cystitis, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. Look at this one. The 
acute hemorrhagic cystitis is very common among few bone marrow transplant recipients. They are immunocompromised. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis are common among renal transplant or kidney transplant patients. What else? Gastroenteritis, hepatitis, encephalitis. If you look at, at it, the patient population, they are common among infants, we or young children, and immunocompromised patients, such as transplant recipients. Okay, so you know, kapis to, all I want you to memorize is this um, adenovirus types. All right, so as a med tech, how do we diagnose using laboratory this adenovirus? It can be number one, direct detection of number one viral particle by electron microscopy through a direct examination of fecal extract. Oh, okay. So, but fecal extract, as you remember, hindi na siya nasa lymph node. The, the adenovirus can be uh, transmitted through fecal oral. Number two, detection of adenoviral antigens by ELISA or your enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. What else? You can actually detect adenoviral uh, nuclear antigen by polymerase chain reaction. It can be diagnosed, it can be used for the diagnosis of adenovirus infections in tissue samples or any body fluids. And lastly, it can be a cell culture and you may find a grape-like cytopathic effect which is a characteristic of adenovirus. We can use the following media. Don't memorize the following media anymore. But all I want you to remember is that when we do cell culture, it can be um, uh, the expected result if you are entertaining adenovirus is a grape-like cytopathic effect such as this. Okay? The adenovirus um, cell culture looks like Actually, it looks like fungi or, or, or um, fungi, hyphae, uh, yeast cell, pero hindi ta, wala pa tayo sa mycology, personal in virus or virology. So when you do cell culture obtained from the body fluids, um, uh, grape-like CP is the expected result for adenovirus. Okay, the isolation of this adenovirus depends on the clinical disease. The virus may be recovered from throat, conjunctival swabs, urine, where else? Fecal, fecal swabs. Ano ba ba? Uh, yun. So, so the isolation is much more difficult from the stool or rectal swabs, pero it can be done. Right? Uh, if you just want to detect viral particle, okay, viral particle, you just need fecal extract. But for a more specific detection of antigens or antibodies or sometimes nuclear antigens by this ELISA, PCR, and cell culture, we may use the following um, uh, uh, fluids or samples, throat swab, conjunctival, conjunctival swabs, or urine culture, urine swab, or uh, urine sample. No, if you want to have a really more specific isolation of the virus. But this one, they are much more difficult. From the stool rectal swab, number one, why? Um, there are many organisms found in the stool or rectal swab. It could be bacteria, parasites, no? throat din naman, and some, and, and some conjunctival swabs and urine. They are more common, pero they are much more to see in a rectal swab done in a throat swab. Okay? So again, grape like clusters are found in the cell culture of adenovirus. All right. So that's the end of the lecture uh, of your powerful Papova virus and adenoviruses. As mentioned, they're all DNA virus compared last week's topic, which are all RNA. For the succeeding weeks, for next week and the week after next week, our topic will be from RNA viruses. So this is the only DNA virus for the midterms um, uh, period. Okay, so thank you for listening. And if you have questions or queries, just message me through Telegram or through your coordinator. Okay, have a good day. Thank you.